All right, so what are these validity scales? The validity scales include um, a number of different items. The first one is the L scale or live scale. And this is 15 items that are common faults that most people are willing to admit to. Um, so if a person doesn't admit to these faults, it's likely that they are lying or exaggerating their virtues or laying claim to an unrealistically high moral standard. So if you have like a priest taking the uh, MMPI, um, his L scale might be really, really high. If it's a convict and his L scale score is really, really high, that means that he wasn't being open and honest when taking the test. So it invalidates the protocol. So you know that the information that he received from that, just like you, a lot of students said when they looked at the questions, well, I would just lie, blah, blah, blah. We have it in the test to determine if the individual is lying. The next scale is the F scale or the infrequency scale. And this uh, asks questions to determine any inconsistencies where the client has contradicted themselves in their responses. So there will be questions that uh, are really similar to one another and they'll just ask them in two different ways and make sure that there's consistency. There's also a, a scale that's like FP. Um, FP is infrequency in a psychiatric population. So um, in norming the test on people with known psychiatric disorders, um, the answers that are given are infrequent even in that population. So you know that the person is likely exaggerating symptoms. The next scale is a K scale or correction scale, and this is another scale designed to uh, reveal the client's attempts to present themselves in the best possible way, or like faking good. And then the question mark scale or cannot say scale is just a number of questions left unanswered. So um, again, like many of you said, you wouldn't want to take the uh, test um, and you'd leave a bunch of things blank that would invalidate it. Or if you just Christmas treed and went and answered randomly, um, the F scale score would be really, really high. So we know that it was invalidated. Other things that can drive up these scores are like if a person uh, doesn't read very good or can't read at all, uh, their validity scores will be like off the chart. Or if somebody is like blatantly psychotic, um, their scores might be really high. Okay, so what exactly are the clinical scales? Uh, there's a lot of writing on the screen here. I know you can't see it, but I'll just uh, I'll read through these and describe them briefly. Okay, scale one is hypochondriasis, which is preoccupation with physical problems, which there is actually a psychological basis for, but symptoms are manifested physically. Depression is... Uh, um, related to a depressed mood or actual clinical depression. Hysteria is very similar to hypochondriasis, but this is specific physical complaints and a denial of concern about physical problems that might detect an inability to deal effectively with life stressors. Scale four is the most important for this class. This is psychopathic deviant, and this is uh, uh, questions that assess antisocial acts. And I don't think we went over this um, yet, but you should know here in a forensic psych class when we say antisocial, this is not someone that is sitting at home because they don't want to go out to a party, they'd rather be alone. It's not antisocial like that. Antisocial here is violating social norms, so habitual rule breaking. Um, it also deals, psychopathic deviate also deals with hostility and anger and a tendency to blame other people for their problems. Scale 5 is masculine and feminine interests and it measures stereotypical masculine and feminine interests. Scale 6 is paranoia and this is feelings of suspiciousness or wariness of other individuals. Scale 7 is psychasthenia which is a ridiculous sounding word, but again, remember this was developed in the 1950s, so we're using lingo from back then. Psychasthenia is like a synonym for anxiety. Um, so feelings of anxiety, concern, obsessive ruminations, and general maladjustment. Scale eight is schizophrenia. This is not like a diagnostic uh, indicator of schizophrenia, but it is related to a lot of the symptoms of schizophrenia including feelings of alienation, differentness, confusion, bizarre sensations, isolation, and psychotic behavior. 
Scale 9, which is relevant in a little bit, um, includes items that show excessive energy and psychomotor uh, acceleration, like hyperactivity and perturbability and scattered behavior. And then scale 10 is social introversion, uh, extroversion, and this measures like uh, shyness and uh, preference for solitary pursuits. Okay, so those are the scales. What you do is you'll get elevations on this. This here is uh, a sample profile for a police officer, and I kind of, uh, down here you see the little scales. There's two that are out of order here, I don't really know why, but we'll list the scales down here. This is one way to report the scores in a chart. Over here would be the validity scores and then the clinical scores. And what you would do is look for elevations above like 60, so you'd see something that would peak up here, and you'd look for the top peaks. This, uh, is a, uh, this is a pretty unremarkable profile. Now, I didn't get this in that nice fancy chart, but here, if we look at scores of individuals and we just list L, F, and K, and then um, the clinical scores down here, here we see a really high L score and a really high F score, so maybe the individual um, contradicted themselves, but the L score indicates that they're lying. And then we look at the clinical scales here, and we look for the highest elevations, and we see a, a four psychopathic deviants high, and a mania is high. So that actually correlates with this interesting thing that was developed by uh, Bartle in 1991, and he called this the immaturity index. And so Bartle was looking at small town police officers and their MMPI scores. And what he was specifically looking at was uh, officers that were forced to resign. So he wanted to know what their MMPI profile looked like. And in doing that, he discovered that individuals that had high scores on psychopathic deviant, mania, and the L, uh, L scale, so those three scales were described as immature or inappropriate by their supervising officers. And if we used these three scales, we could, according to Bartle, correctly identify 74% of officers, but we would misclassify 26% who were dismissed or terminated or forced to resign from the police force. And we could, um, that, that's a pretty good indicator, although there's some false negatives there, so that 26%. Um, I'm sorry, that would be a false positive. So we said, yes, they are immature, according to the immaturity index, and we misclassified 26%, and they were fired uh, based on the immaturity index. That would be a false positive. A false negative, on the other hand, would be um, uh, retaining those officers that um, should have been dismissed based on the immaturity index. Okay, the California Psychological Inventory is interesting, but I've never used it, and I, I really don't know any clinical psychologists that have, um, but its, uh, it's subscales reflect personality traits more so than like diagnostic category traits it's like dominant sociability and flexibility. The relevant uh, scale here is the Inwald personality inventory and you know honestly I've never used this. Um, I just use the MMPI um, but I'm sure lots of forensic psychologists use the Inwald personality inventory but it's specifically designed for the selection of public safety officers. So it was developed by Robin Inwald in 1980, and it was really designed to counter the use of the MMPI for public safety officer selection. So here's some of the scales from the Inwald, or the IPI. Measures a rigid personality. There's lots of scales on here, and these scales are related to areas of difficulty that police officers might have and ultimately lead to their dismissal. So rigid personality type 
alcohol problems, drug problems, substance abuse, driving violations, job difficulties, trouble with the law and society, antisocial attitudes, hyperactivity, absence abuse, illness concerns, treatment programs, anxiety, type A personality, phobic personality, lack of assertiveness, obsessive personality, depression, loner type, interpersonal difficulties, family conflicts, sexual concerns, spouse mate concerns, undue suspiciousness, and unusual experiences and thoughts. And I think you can just, uh, uh, just by looking at those items there, um, you can see how those would be important traits to assess in somebody that is potentially going to become a police officer. Another way of measuring characteristics that might be uh, positively or negatively associated with performance as a potential police officer are situational tests. Three of those tests include the foot patrol test, the clues test, and a bull session. Now, a foot patrol test is taking a potential candidate on like a route through a city, like a downtown, maybe like 10 blocks, and then uh, at the end of that, asking them what they remembered from uh, their little walk. The clues test is actually setting up a fake abduction and planting clues in an office. So it's like a public office, a public worker that was kidnapped, and the individual has 10 minutes to go through the scene to look for clues. And then a bull session is sitting in a room with um, other officers and uh, asking questions that are relevant to uh, police work. So those are three tests, that's kind of interesting. However, even though these have been in use for a long, long time, back in the uh, 60s, Mills, McDivitt, and Tonkin found that the clues test alone, out of all of them, was correlated with um, class ranking in the police academy. But it's interesting to note that um, it wasn't correlated with intelligence. Okay, so a psychologist in a police department, they can work in developing programs. Um, so maybe, um, you know, maybe the program isn't even related to police work. Maybe it's a smoking cessation or a weight loss program or something like that, a stress management program. Um, they might develop programs that are relevant, like uh, training police officers in recognizing mental illness. Um, they might work in direct consultation with police officers. Maybe the officers have a bizarre crime and they want to consult with the psychologist, or they have a suspect that has mental illness and want to consult. And they can work in a direct therapeutic context, so actually working as a therapist with police officers. <laughs>